Mark Thiessen, Fox News contributor and former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, also a Washington Post columnist, uh, joins me now. Mark, great to see you. Um, okay, first of all, let's just, just talk Christmas. about how unpopular this president is. He's apparently the most unpopular president um, in, in, in a history basically g dating back to World War II. Um, but he thinks that he's going to somehow won a popularity contest when it comes to the next election. Yeah, you used to, you know, that's the 538 average of polls goes back all the way back to uh, Harry Truman, which is the modern polling era. And there is not a single president who's more unpopular than Joe Biden. You used to have to say, except for Jimmy Carter, but guess what? He's 11 points less popular at this point in his presidency than Jimmy Carter was when he was going into Ronald uh, re-election with a uh, campaign uh, against Ronald Reagan. So this, this is deeply unpopular. And the problem is also that his base is collapsing. His base is abandoning him. He was, he won young voters overwhelmingly, uh, but now Trump has a lead with young voters. He won Hispanics overwhelmingly. Uh, now Trump is making gains with Hispanics. He's black, African American voters. Trump won 8% of African Americans in 2020. Right now, he's winning 22% of African Americans in key swing states. And the other thing is Arab voters. Uh, he needs to overwhelmingly win Arab voters in Michigan in order to win that swing state. And they're rebelling against him over his support for Israel. So he, he's losing ground with them. So his base is falling apart. Uh, he's the most unpopular president we've ever had. And Yet, Donald Trump is only beating him uh, in the Wall Street Journal poll by four points, which is within the margin of error. Yeah, and according to one poll, 67% uh, of Democrats want somebody else to be on the, par uh, the party's nominee. That does not look good when your own party yeah. doesn't support you. The president, mine, meantime, uh, gave one of his final and rare interviews of 2023 uh, with comedian Conan O'Brien. They discussed some pretty serious topics, but wasn't exactly hard hitting. Uh, they had time to get in some jokes about Trump comparing him to a villain in Harry Potter. Let's watch. MAGA Republicans, they've kind of flipped the script and uh, they're saying, well, we can let Ukraine go. It's not really uh, in our interest. And I don't understand it. It's confusing to me. Say, the other guy says, we can work with Putin. He's smart. The other guy. I like that he's the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Voldemort now. His name <laughs> shall not be mentioned. Well, <laughs> good point. Yeah. I plead guilty. Hmm. Okay. Um, Biden has held the significantly less, I just thought was so awkward, significantly less interviews compared to Trump, as you know. Uh, so far in his presidency, Biden has held 74 interviews compared to Trump, who held 273 at the same time in his presidency. Well, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre defending the president's decision to skip his year-end press conference. Watch. I think the, anytime the president travels and is in front of the American people, he does that. He did that in Wisconsin when he talked about binomics. He talked about small businesses and how that's a pillar of binomics and investing in America. So you heard him do that directly to the American people. Look, he does every, he, we, we make an effort uh, to do a press conference as often as possible, whether it's here at home or uh, abroad. I don't know what she's talking about. First of all, I don't know why she keeps saying Bidenomics. I don't even think <laughs> Biden knows what that word means. And I don't even think the administration wants that word tossed around. But as far as news conferences, he, no, he avoids the camera in general. And there's a reason for that. It's not his decision. His handlers are like, mm, keep it away from the camera. And when a reporter shouts out a question, usually it's an incoherent answer. And here we are. Well, first of all, with Bidenomics, you know, they're trying to embrace Reaganomics, which was the term that the left came up with to criticize Ronald Reagan, uh, and uh, he embraced it. The problem was when Ronald Reagan was president, it was morning in America again. It's not morning in America today. So embracing Bidenomics, our Fox News poll shows 14 percent of Americans think Biden's economic policies improve their lives. So go ahead, embrace Biden economics. That's a really brilliant uh, Bidenomics. That's a great strategy. Uh, but look, that balance of press conferences you showed actually works in Biden's favor because, yes, we'll criticize him for not uh, coming up in front of the press. But the only way he wins this election is by making it a referendum on Donald Trump. Uh, it's by doing a basement strategy from the basement of the, res of the White House residents. Because the more he talks, the more he makes it about himself, the more uh, he's the most unpopular president in, this, in the, in the post-war era, uh, he's not gonna, it's not going to help him. He wants to make it a referendum on Donald Trump, and Donald yeah. Trump will cooperate with that, because Donald Trump likes to be the center of attention. So that's their winning strategy. That's how they think they pulled this out. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on the fact that, you're, that everything you're paying for is more expensive, that the, our economic policies have made your, your life worse. Focus <laughs> on that guy because Nothing that, to guy, see that guy could be president that's <laughs> exactly
Yeah. Okay, I gotta no, move on. Nothing to see here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is the mentality, I swear. Uh, okay, it's crunch time in Iowa. Yeah. The first in the nation caucuses, as you know, just 24 days away. GOP presidential candidates have been all over the Hawkeye state in recent days, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Now, there's a new Fox Business poll which shows him a distant second to former President Trump in Iowa with 18% support, but his supporters say it is far from over. Listen. Look, I'm, I'm here for one simple reason, and it's because I believe in Ron DeSantis. Um, it's why I'm here in Iowa. I'm here supporting Governor DeSantis for president. I know when he gets in that office, we're going to have leadership on the border. We need somebody that's focused, somebody that's disciplined, somebody that has a record of getting yep. things done. It is a different time. It's time for a leader that can serve eight years, not just four. We need somebody that can get in there, attack the bureaucracy, turn this country around, and then take it to a next level. And uh, that person is Ron DeSantis. Meanwhile, a new poll out of New Hampshire shows the race tightening there with the primary about just a month away. Nikki Haley now trailing former President Donald Trump by just 14 points. Um, we have to weigh in, you know, his, his hearings right now and the fact that Colorado has just decided to take him off the, the primary and now we got to wait for the Supreme Court to make the ultimate decision. He hasn't been convicted of uh, um, insurrectionist yet, but at that same token, it seems that it's actually empowering his base. Oh, 100%. I mean, that, that's, that's why he's in the lead that he is in. Uh, but look, I mean, it, it, the interesting thing about that Iowa poll is that Nikki Haley's within two points of Ron DeSantis, who put all of his eggs in the Iowa basket. So really, the Iowa caucuses, it's about who comes in second right. and who's going to come out of there with some momentum going into New Hampshire. So if, she can, if he comes in third, he's finished. And then Nikki Haley's got 30 percent. If Chris Christie got out of the race and, her vo and his voters went over there, it would be a 42-44 race between her and Trump yep. in New Hampshire. Uh, so that, that would make it competitive. Right. So so well, Chris Christie's got to get out. Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.